All right, where's Juice Box been? For you guys that have, are up on the channel, you know that this is our 1984 Bronco, nicknamed Juice Box, and I uh, haven't been able to make a video on it for a while because it's been such a crazy busy summer and winter. But this is my first priority to get back on the road for spring because it is my favorite vehicle. Now, if you're new, um, this is our Bronco that we drove from Oregon as a bush buggy, started fixing it up as we were going through the United States, and then brought it home. Uh, five O Coyote swap, six out of 80, new exhaust, new interior, new paint, um, roll cage, soft top, everything. And if you want to f catch up on all those videos, they are neatly put together in a playlist on our website, thebossgarage.com, so you can check that out. Um, but uh, in this episode, we have so much work to do yet because just throwing an engine into the frame is not an engine swap. It is all the little things that uh, you need to find out what you're in for when you're doing a swap. So if you're looking at putting a nice 530 horsepower Coyote into this style of truck, uh, you're gonna wanna catch up on this entire series and watch this video so you can do it and get your ride going down the road just like I wanna do with Juice Box. Here we go. colors that we went with. This thing has been super good to us and has done more than it ever intended to do. We probably put more miles on this thing in the last year than in the previous 20, 30 put together. Exciting day, this is better than Christmas because it's unwrapping a dream that I've had for yeah. a couple years. A bull nose Bronco with a 5 Coyote in it. I was like, oh yeah, I can give you a hand. Give me all the tough jobs. <laughs> now we can run the exhaust. I'm gonna run the exhaust before I build my transmission mount. We have about the best steering that we could possibly get on a bulldozer Bronco. Customizing custom parts since 2015. Okay, so I'm running into a problem with my vehicles because there's so many vehicles, I forget the difference between each vehicle. It's been so long. I forget where the hood latch is. I think it's right there. There we go. Oh, that is such a beautiful, beautiful engine. Look at that. Oh, good old Coyote. So, um, basically when I do my engine swaps, I start with what you can't change. Can't change where the engine sits now that it's in there. Um, now we have to work around everything else. So can't really change the exhaust. The exhaust manifolds are where they are. So we're going to bolt them down and then work the exhaust around there. And by rule, the fuel, the plumbing, and the electrical, you can snake around all these other things. So um, I've got the one manifold bolted in, the other one needed a little bit of modification, so we're gonna get into that, show you guys uh, what's involved in that, and uh, we'll start putting this Lyle exhaust on there. Vince wants to do some easy welding for me. He says, stop giving me all this difficult stuff to do. Um, give me some nice exhaust to take up. So I'm here to make everybody happy. There's a Passenger side bolts right in, but the driver's side, I gotta notch this little um, detent out. I imagine that's for a heat shield, but I gotta take that off. It's too tight. It's pretty close. I think I have to notch the firewall as well, just slightly. Because these are the stock exhaust manifolds on a, off an F-150, and they fit perfect, but I did have to massage the firewall just a little bit in the back corner. I'll show you underneath. So that took a little longer because I had to sand it back down and paint it again. But they basically come down perfect. Like there's the cylinder head, there's your exhaust pointing right in the middle of the opening. And on the driver's side is just as good, but you can see where I had to just fold that over a little bit. It's, it's actually neater than it looks on the light because the shadows, but it actually looks pretty good. And then repainted everything. So. Um, now we can run the exhaust. I'm gonna run the exhaust before I build my transmission mount because uh, I can manipulate the mount easier than I can the exhaust. So 
I want it away from the floorboards so that it doesn't get the floorboards super hot. So I want to drop that down right away as low as I can. And then um, I'm probably still going to have to get rid of that bracket for the mount there. The new mount is going to go on the uh, long arms. So actually I kind of want to use both those because mount is right there, I believe. So yeah, that lines up better with that bracket than it does that. Lots to think about. I might have to run the exhaust right over the top there. I think I will. Okay, see how one thing leads to another and then you talk it through and, and uh, you figure it out. Nice, this, uh, this strap has been here for a year going, uh, guys, hello, do something. <laughs> So these are all things you get with a kit from Lyles if you're specific. So this is just the bell mouth that goes over the exhaust manifold. And that lets you angle this just a little bit in case you need to do that. We are going to run cats for two reasons. One, why not? Two, um, it will shut it up a little bit. These coyotes are so obnoxiously loud. Um, we're not going for that... Uh, 20 year old, look at me, my parents didn't pay any attention to me, so I have to drive an obnoxiously loud Mustang and rev the shit out of it from light to light because I need more attention. We want the nice and quiet, um, I'm gonna talk to my family while I drive. Um, so then we got the mufflers as well. And we're gonna point the exhaust right out the back corner so that it doesn't loop back into because of the turbulence. So as you drive, you actually create a little bit of turbulence behind, it kind of goes back in again. So when we had the exhaust, we put it in front of the tire and it was okay. We're gonna put it on the back corner, pointing out at the bumper. Okay, so now it's just trying to picture it in your head and make sure you don't cut the wrong thing. So Lyles has the proper bends already to go out to the corner. So the back half of the truck is already taken care of. Mufflers will go right there and that will allow me to put a clamp on it and take the back half off from the front half so we can still remove the exhaust if we have to. Um, for transmission changes, blah, blah, stuff like that. So now it's just uh, finding a corner that goes to the cat right away. We'll still weld that solid. Then we need enough straight pipe to be able to uh, make it to the muffler and the mufflers will be right in front of it. So I think we're gonna start with a, um, he gave me just a bunch of 45 bends here. Um, so we'll start with that, make a nice short corner and keep that up out of the way of the transmission cross member. Okay, I got the downpipe to the cat, to the muffler, which will now have a clamp right there so that I can take the tailpipe out over top of the axle. Uh, at this point, uh, don't bother bolting down your hangers because it moves. So just vice grip them in place. You can always drill the holes after. And then uh, everything's just tacked so Vince can TIG weld it nicely together. Um, but at this point, you can take it off and make sure it doesn't look all crooked and gross because even though it looks good, Underneath here, and everything's kind of straight, once you take it off and lay it on the ground, you're like, why is everything like not straight and looking pretty? But yeah, so we're gonna mock up the back and then we can take this down and uh, put it where we want it. So as you guys know, Lyles is an awesome sponsor of our channel. They're a Canadian company that uh, builds all their exhaust in-house. And again, we are using one of their exhausts on our Bronco. Now this will quiet it down because I don't want a super loud exhaust. And that's also why we went with uh, uh, cast iron manifolds rather than headers. Each way you do the exhaust sounds a little different. And uh, if you guys aren't aware, if you become a builder member on our website, you get massive discounts to Lyle's exhaust. They ship everywhere. They can build custom kits. They've got pre-made kits for certain models and years already. So definitely check them out on the website. You get a free t-shirt if you order through our website, plus the discount. So definitely check that out. Along Along with all of our other companies that we work with, you also get discounts to them as well. So even though Vince finished welding the exhaust, we're not the right time to install it because we're gonna be installing the fuel lines and redoing the wiring in the frame. So rather than the exhaust getting in the way, we'll just put it off to the side and install it later. Okay, so in juice box, um, Biggest thing I didn't like about the Bronco is the steering. It was just all over the place. We fixed 90% of that with doing the solid axle swap. 
but we're going to finish the last little bit with a tighter steering column from I did it and a red top steering uh, box. To connect them, we got a Borgeson steering shaft, so we are all set. Uh, we, already, we already pulled the other motor off because we had to send the core away and go across the border to grab it. And uh, yeah, these are pretty reasonably priced. I think they're only a few hundred bucks. I'm gonna put one on the F-350 as well because that steering is horrible. But anyway, we'll throw this on and then uh, we'll do the steering column and a few other small pieces. Here we go. Okay, so our steering box is on. Now, the Coyote uh, that we got is out of a Mustang, but the Mustang doesn't have power steering, but somebody already swapped this one in, and we have our aftermarket pump here um, that will work nicely with our steering box. Now, we don't have hydro boost, we have vacuum brakes on this, and there's nothing wrong with that. Really happy with these bare brakes, um, but if you, I, I'm not sure, you can comment down below if the F-150 is different, it might have a power steering pump, but if you get it out of the Mustang, I think you need to get an aftermarket power steering pump for it, because I think it's got electric steering. Not 100% sure, but um, while I'm figuring that out and while I'm figuring out the hoses for um, to connect my power steering pump to my nice new red box, uh, Aaron's gonna show you how to rewrap the steering wheel. And we got the, we're wrapping the steering wheel so that it matches the interior. Then while he's doing that, I'm gonna get going on the column. So here we go. Okay, so I went ahead and stitched the circumference of the steering wheel on both sides. This uh, steering wheel cover actually came with its own thread, but the seats and juice box actually have black thread. So I went and bought this on Amazon and it's a thread specifically for leather. It's a bit thicker, it's actually waxed as well. And uh, yeah, I'll leave links to all of this stuff. And then after putting on the uh, cover and with the glue, I left that overnight. Uh, and it worked out pretty good and uh, it just wasn't quite thick enough for these to just touch they were overlapping a little bit so what I had what I did was I grabbed some of my uh, scotch mounting tape this stuff is very good um, it's it's a little bit too good for this purpose but um, so that's why I still left one side on because I don't I don't want it sticking to this material um, I just wanted it to hold this stuff together. It's actually a foam and uh, I'm hoping that, uh, that, that, that those edges just don't show through once, once this is pulled as tight as I can get it. Uh, it should kind of eliminate those edges. You don't have to push very hard to uh, not feel those. So uh, yeah, that's what that looks like in there. And uh, I just kind of went through, basically just stuck both those sides together, just kind of fill in that little gap, whatever, whatever was left. And that should give us a pretty good steering wheel. So next we're just going to, I don't know if it's like a baseball stitch, but we're going to go through and uh, basically stitch this up. I also grabbed the centerpiece for the steering wheel. I did use the double side tape just to stick it to this and pulled it really tight. Um, and on the back, st taped it on the back, use both sides for that just to get uh, this to and then fit, test fit that and it actually fits it's really nice so it's gonna be really snug in there that's basically what it's gonna look like and this is this is nice and tight on the edges I tucked it in behind the plastic on the back as well just all the way to where the stitch marks are I'm really happy with that I think this is gonna look really good now we're ready to stitch Pretty happy with that. It feels really good. It's been a few days now since I dyed this, just for an extra durability test. You can see this really, really good. 
it's not scratching off at all. I'm really, really impressed with it. It feels really sturdy and uh, really durable. All right, so along with the steering box um, and the front axle swap, if you haven't seen the solid axle swap that we did with the Dana 44, that improved the steering and handling of this thing immensely, along with the long arms from all for fun off-road. But uh, one last thing is this steering column and this, it's got so much play in it. So imagine the steering wheel on top of that yet. Um, this thing is just a mess. And then there's a bunch of joints going to the steering box and they all have a little bit of play. So we're gonna replace this with a uh, steering column from, I did it. And we're really happy with I did it's steering columns. They, uh, we got to check out their um, shop and uh, I've had this one for a while, just getting around to it, uh, unfortunately now, but um, we have used other steering columns and I did it is by far the best one. The cancel it works really well. The, uh, everything is tight and it's all made in the US as well. So this is a universal kit. So um, I did go with black because I think you're gonna have to weld the mounts on the side here which kind of sucks, but um, we also needed the shifter handle for the automatic. So we didn't put the key switch in here. Um, we're gonna put a uh, push button start in this. I really want uh, the push button to go out probably right here. We'll make a nice little holder for it right here. But uh, first thing, before we get all that, uh, we're just gonna pull this one out and uh, figure out the mounts and then put the steering wheel on it that uh, Aaron's reupholstered. So pretty straightforward, disconnect the steering underneath there, four little bolts underneath here. This wiring doesn't actually do a whole lot. The key switch just pushes down on a button, which I had to modify to fit our screen. So to start it, you actually had to just push this in. Kind of, kind of really ridiculous. You could uh, basically steal any Ford by just cutting this rod and then pushing on it. But uh, I'm sure that's been figured out by now. So we're gonna pull this thing out and uh, move everything over. There we go. Okay, so these are the mounting pins for the steering column. There's nothing else that mounts it. It kind of centers it in the hole here at the bottom. So um, pretty straightforward. We just uh, cut this out, knock these things out. I think, I'm not sure if it's a rivet or if it's welded. Doesn't look like it's welded. It looks like tiny little tacks in the corner. But I'll cut this out, lay it right over top of the other one, drill the holes, pop these in. Then the spacing is exactly perfect. And then tack them to it, touch a paint, bolt it up, and it's as simple as that. Okay, so I found center just by tilting the, the column down, scribed a mark, made a mark, and then I just hose clamped the template on there. And now I can just drill away. Customizing custom parts since 2015. <laughs> it's a universal fit. It needs some modification. There we go. Because we got the mount on, now this kind of supports the bottom of it and it's a seal at the same time. So you do want that nice and tight because otherwise too much engine noise comes in. And it's still pliable, so there's nothing wrong with this other than it's a different size and it slops around a bit too much. So I just went to town, got an ABS cap, two inch, and that should cover that up. Comes with a free hose clamp. You take that, throw that away, cut out the center so that it's tight around here. I think it should just be this, this should be the difference all the way around. And then uh, that will seal that up and then we can mount it. Okay, the Borgeson and I did it go hand in hand, even though they're different companies. But anyway, I put the U-joints on the steering box and on the column. And then we basically just want to measure uh, as long as that shaft is. So I've got 15 and a half. And you just have to be close because their steering 
columns are collapsible so if you get into an accident it doesn't impale you so i like that just take it put it kind of in the middle maybe uh, extend it farther than retract it if i didn't retract it too far how strong is my nice tight tolerances hold on i got it there we go so you want to stick it a little bit not quite half, but just make it so that it has a little bit of room to go in and out because you want to be able to collapse it, slide the U-joints over top and then extend it again, right? So now we can measure 15 and a half from here to here and then pop it on. So we got it, we can stick it on. Now we can just tighten this down and make a mark on it. The set screw is longer, so it's meant to have a hole go right through the shaft, just to guarantee that nothing ever happens to it. But now I got my mark, so I can drill that out. Of course, that's not big enough. I have to grab my dull drill bit. through and then I don't have my wrench on me but obviously tighten the lock nut and that's not going anywhere ever it's the appropriate tool I'm pretty sure and there we have a nice new steering column which actually takes up less room than the original and is much tighter and much safer so um, we have about the best steering that we could possibly get on a an old uh, I don't know, bullnose bronco with the getting rid of the twin i-beam and going to the solid axle um, this will uh, this should make it go nice and smooth down the road. I have to take that off again just because uh, we have to put our shifter linkage on there. But um, I'm just going to wait until the transmission's back before we get uh, too carried away with that. So um, that is the steering column. We'll throw the steering wheel on and call it a day. I know, I know, it's an automatic. It's supposed to have three pedals, but here's the thing. We've got the 55, Silverado, the Audi, transfer truck, are all manual, and that's enough shifting. We got a little bit of everything, so this will make it a little bit more universal for everybody to enjoy, including our wives. So we can hop in it, push button start, stick it in gear, and then open the window and have your hair flowing in the wind. Oh, I'm jealous because that's not going to be me, but we got a little bit of everything and, I, and, and I've had lots of comments too. Oh, everything you have is patina. Well, no, like we spent a lot of money painting the Bronco and the GTO and the Kenworth and the Silverado. And we're going to be painting two more vehicles. It's like we like a little bit of everything. So automatic, it's got to have the right transmission and the right exterior interior for the appropriate vehicle. And this 6R80 automatic with this nice steering column is perfect for the Bronco. Look at that. Oh. See the tires move with just even the tiniest bit of movement from the steering wheel, so that's exciting because that will uh, that will make that look brand new. All right, so for energy suspension, we've got a transmission mount, and this goes like that. Um, the issue is it's not the same as what originally came with it. Now this. This is the factory one. Um, this was off of an F-150 that we bought way back. This angle is correct. 
but it's a little bit off. It's a little bit bigger. Like I said before, anybody that sends us parts, no, don't bother putting a finish on it because I just have to cut this off on both of those, weld these onto here, drill the holes to match these two, and then we've got a nice solid mount for that's able to handle our 500 horse now from our Coyote. So um, this is probably still okay. The rubber looks okay. Uh, but it's time to uh, upgrade a little bit, make sure she doesn't vibrate or fall off. In the meantime, uh, we are pulling this 6R80. We're gonna send that to Hughes Performance, and we're gonna make sure that it's able to handle the extra horsepower that we're putting on the, on the engine. Now, I don't think I'm ever gonna put a blower on this. We dynoed the, Brad got this up to 540 horse, I believe, to the crank. He says there's more available if we, uh, if we want. Uh, that's plenty for a very high vehicle that's very square and likes to roll. So we've got our steering figured out. It's nice and straight now, but even still, that's plenty that we have. But if we ever decide to go that route, um, our transmission will be able to handle 700 horse and then uh, we can make whining noises and uh, make it even more fun. But in the meantime, we'll modify this mount and uh, send the transmission out. By the time the transmission comes back, we should have it running. Here we go. Okay, so there's the holes for the transmission mount. Now I need a spacer. So I tried to measure hole spacing and stuff before, but it's never really worked for me, especially when these are on angles. So what I did was I cut bolts off and put little studs in there. And I used the old mount to figure out the spacing for my uh, spaces. Now I can put these one way, the holes line up, I swear. So that will hold it in the right spot. And then I can just hold this plate up from the bottom of it and then tack those plates to the back side of this and then use those plates to drill the holes in this plate. And that way, I don't even have to get out my tape measure. I just drill them in the exact same spots using all the old pieces of templates and that works for me because 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 it's on an angle, measuring is too complicated. You gotta, you gotta think and stuff. Here you just do stuff and you end up with a perfect result. Here we go. Okay, so I got a couple spot welds on there. Now you're thinking, Rich, because you've got studs hanging out, how are you going to get that bracket off? Well, I thought about that too, right before I welded it. So I turned them in as much as possible. I think I should just be able to pry them off. Got my trusty little bar from Princess Auto. Let's see if I can do that and hold the camera. Probably not. I think I can get it off though. Otherwise, I just have to line up those tacks again. This is... I kind of know what it feels like to work with one hand. I think I could lose a hand and still be okay. <laughs> Here we go. See? I'm gonna be good looking, but I'm not stupid. in, two bolts in, nice by finger, all goes well, these will line up, oh look at that, spin that in by hand, so wonderful, we are all set, nice, okay so I've got the plate bolted to the long arm, I got the mount in place, and then I got my CAD drawing, cardboard accurately drawn, to get the angles right. I'm off a of hair, so I'll just make that a little bit longer. Now I can verify that it misses the drive shaft. My exhaust goes up high, and I made this bracket longer so that it can catch the original mount um, right here on this end. So it'll be connected to the long arm and to the upper mount because that's riveted in and it's really hard to get rid of. So might as well use it. <laughs> or no, it's not riveted in. I can't get those bolts out without taking the cab off. That's what it was. So I'll tighten those back down again because the, the bolt goes through and then it hits the floor. So I might as well just tighten those back up again and then uh, bolt that to this plate. Weld a C channel across that way with the C pointing down so it doesn't hold the dirt. And we got a nice cross member. 
All right, so I got the mount all mocked up and I made the plates a lot bigger than they had to be, but that's because it's better too big than too small. Um, and then there's things that you don't think of, like it, the, the seat channel is actually tilted because the transmission's on an angle. So I got a little bit of a gap here now, but that's okay. We got a welder to fix that. And I know it looks like just C-channel and flat plate right now, but once you trim it, put a couple angles on it, put a couple braces on there, she's gonna look factory. So um, we take it apart, grind it all, make the plates a little smaller. As you can see where I marked everything, and then we'll tack it in place, take it off, weld it solid, and we got a transmission mount. Okay, so while I'm finishing welding the mount and the exhaust and the wiring and the plumbing, um, transmission's heading off to Hughes Performance. Got a couple of cheap Princess Auto straps, though they ain't going nowhere. So we'll ship that out. We gotta go to the border tomorrow to pick up rims for those tires for the Fargo so we can drop this off to get that shipped out to them. I might wrap a little bit of saran wrap around the straps yet. And then uh, that's it. On to the next thing. There's the finished transmission mount. Everything welded up real nice. Um, so this will go on the bracket that goes in the upper frame there. It gets bolted there. So we just kind of, when you lay it, you just got to kind of tuck it in and then lay it on top of the mounts that go to the long arms that connects the long arms together. It'll be super strong. We're going to hit it with some trim clad primer and some black. And that is good enough for me because we're actually going to drive this thing. So um, she's going to get dirty in that anyway. But that, I'm pretty proud of that. That looks good. I was going to cover this in and really finish off that, that look there. Problem is, dirt's going to sit in there. And uh, now, there's not going to be any dirt sitting in there. And I'm going to stop it right there. It looks good. Um, I could spend another... I was close. See, I even marked my pipe. And I was about to weld that in there and close that all up. And I'm like, you know what? That's another hour's worth of work that... Um, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to make it any stronger. It's going to finish it off. But uh, now the dirt's able to fall through. Nothing's going to stick in there. And it's not going to get rusty. And I saved an hour. So, here we go. custom mount attached to the long arms uh, from All For Fun Off-Road. This thing's gonna handle like a dream and that's probably the beefiest cross member that uh, has ever made. They fit together really nice. That bracket goes in the upper bracket. They're gonna pull all the lines out of this frame yet and finish painting the bottom of this thing and underneath. But uh, she's looking really, really good to handle all that horsepower and torque from that little girl. I think we got it to 520 horse, forgot what the torque was. But um, I'm confident in my little cross member. On to the next thing, here we go. All right, now, um, as I've found out, if uh, just because you park it inside the shop doesn't mean that it, anything gets done unless you work on it. So it's been a busy year, I'm happy to be back on it, but um, just putting an engine in a frame is honestly about 10% of the work. The rest of it is in all the fine details as you see, have you seen in this video and the videos coming up. There's still a lot of work to be done. All the wiring, all the plumbing, um, making sure that everything talks to each other and is safe. So you want to stick around for that. Um, definitely follow us on all of the social media, especially Instagram. That's kind of the updates, the live versions of it. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, definitely do because there's a lot going on. Um, you don't want to come back and miss a whole pile of uh, episodes if uh, you just 
I haven't been notified that we've released videos. So transmission rebuild on the NV4500 is coming up in the Silverado because I need to hoist for that while Hughes Performance is rebuilding the transmission. So that video is coming out on this, uh, the same kind of format that Excalibur did on the Allison. So you get a full in-depth view of what happens to making a transmission handle 700 horse. And I, then we'll be putting the LLY in the 05 dually um, because we got big news coming up with that truck as well. So thanks for watching. As always, remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich, you got to get out there and you got to work on it um, because whether you have money or not, it is so rewarding once you see it at the end of the day. Whether it's an hour or two, uh, a day or a week, um, you have to get out there and work on it because uh, it is well, well worth it. If you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.